A husband is a man who always forgets your birthday and never misses an opportunity to remind you of your age, said Price married Marilyn Monroe. On December 31, 1948, Marilyn Monroe and famous impresario Johnny Hyde met at a New Year's Eve party at Sam Spiegel's mansion, where, in the words of Orson Welles, there were the best delicacies and the best girls. According to another version, they met in the summer of 1949. Marilyn Monroe participated in a pin-up photo shoot near the Racket Club pool in Palm Springs. Hollywood photographer Bruno Bernard worked with her. Marilyn was smiling radiantly in a brightly colored swimsuit. It seemed as if a glow was emanating from her. The photographer took a few pictures and heard behind him. Hi, Bruno. You must find a new talent every week. This time you've outdone yourself. Who is that beautiful lady? Your girlfriend? Bruno turned around and saw Johnny Hyde, vice president of William Morris. He was staring admiringly at Marilyn. From one look at Miss Monroe at Hyde's heart squeezed, shortened breath, and he was ready to give everything in the world for one look in her eyes, for a flutter of eyelashes, for her smile. The meeting was fateful. One of the most influential people in Hollywood paid attention to the young starlet. Hyde was short, thin, with sparse hair and a mobile face. Mr. Hyde was 53 years old and married. Biographers write that he was born in the Russian Empire in Street Petersburg. His parents were circus performers, members of the troupe Russian Imperial Theater of Nikolai Gaitabura, who emigrated to the United States in 1898. The boy was three years old at the time and his name was Ivan Nikolaevich Gaitabura. Early in his career, he worked as a circus juggler and acrobat under the name Johnny Gatabura. After making his way into Hollywood, he took the name Johnny Hyde and in the 1930s achieved the position of vice president of the William Morris Agency, a major American holding company that owned acting agencies throughout the United States. He is stunted, but not small or weak, strong in body, and with good manners. He is one of the few influential people in Hollywood in whom you could feel the breed. This is how the director Elia Kazan described him. Hyde was a very interesting guy, Bill Davis, who worked with the William Morris Agency, characterized him. Strong as a whip, aggressive, passionate, red tape, a ladies' man even though he wasn't handsome. He had crush on Marilyn from the start, sending her gifts and love letters. He was completely restless. I can imagine how hard it was for her to ignore him or turn him down because, after all, he was a very powerful man. Plus, she was having career problems and needed help. After getting to know the 22-year-old Monroe, Hyde began flooding her with letters, gifts, and postcards, begging her to write and call them in Phoenix, where he was then staying at the Arizona Biltmore Hotel. In one letter, Hyde wrote, I'll forgive you anything because you said you missed me. In postcards, he called her my sweet Marilyn and my precious, and in public, he referred to her as baby. Simply put, he was fascinated by Marilyn and dreamed that she would reciprocate. Hyde immediately and unconditionally believed in her. He persuaded Monroe not to abandon attempts to break through in the movie. Subsequently, Marilyn recalled, When I first shared with Johnny Hyde my dreams of the movie, he did not laugh at me. He listened to me carefully and said, of course you can be an actress. That was the first person who took me seriously, for which I am immensely grateful. From that moment on, Johnny took the girl under his tutelage to make her a star. He began with changes in her appearance, paid for surgery to change the shape of the chin and rhinoplasty, insisted that she recolored into a platinum blonde. Soon Hyde gained a huge authority in her eyes and became her patron and then her lover, Kindness is the strangest thing you notice in a lover or indeed in any man. No man in my life has ever looked at me with such kind eyes. He not only understood me, he understood Norma Jean. He alone knew the pain, the despair I carried in my soul. When he put his arms around me and told me he loved me, I knew it was true. No one had ever loved me the way he did. And with all my heart, I wished I could return the favor. But to make myself love was like making myself fly like a bird. With Johnny's help, Marilyn signed with the William Morris Agency. He tried to be honest with her and by then had left the family as he had serious intentions for Ms. Monroe. 
Hyde settled in Beverly Hills on North Palm Drive at 718 North Palm Drive. In the living room of his house to please Monroe placed soft, cozy sofas and left in the center of the space where you could dance. He tried to make the room similar to Marilyn's favorite Hollywood restaurant, Romanoff's. Marilyn often stayed with Hyde at the mansion, although she continued to rent a room at the Beverly Carlton Hotel. This gave her a sense of independence and allowed her to observe decorum. Hyde was busy expanding Marilyn's horizons and introduced her to Russian classics, letting her read works by Turgenev and Tolstoy from his library, as well as books devoted to film. When he suggested that Monroe familiarize herself with Stanislavski's book, Preparation of Actors, Marilyn reread the work several times because she knew that Johnny would check how well she knew even minor details. She avidly absorbed everything new and sometimes could not wait for the opportunity to discuss the work with him. Hyde introduced Marilyn to many pieces of classical music and taught her discipline. Usually, if Marilyn was not busy at work, she would get up late eat a leisurely breakfast and talk on the phone for hours, but Hyde convinced her that it was wrong to do so. You need to use every minute and constantly evolve. As a result, Marilyn gained self-confidence, learned to defend her point of view, and even became more punctual. Johnny showed Marilyn the script, a long-standing project of the film studio Metro, written on the basis of the brothers Karamazov, and advised her to focus on dramatic roles. It was Hyde who convinced the directors that Ms. Monroe will cope with the roles of Angela in Asphalt Jumble and Ms. Caswell in All About Eve. He was for her more than a friend and lover. Hyde replaced her caring father, idolized and respected her. Yes, he respected her as a person and a person. Given how she was treated in those years, Marilyn's respect was vital. Johnny was more than twice my age, a gentle, kind, brilliant man and I never knew anyone like him. He had tremendous charm and warmth. It was Johnny who inspired me to read good books and enjoy good music. Marilyn Monroe on Johnny Hyde. It was Hyde who became the first person who showed genuine concern for Marilyn. He first brought the girl to the luxury clothing store Saks and chose for her a first stoles and other outfits. Since then, she became a regular customer. Johnny repeatedly called Marilyn to marry and even officially divorced his wife. The girl, although she told him that he loved, in marriage nevertheless refused, but continued to live with him. The person I most wanted to help in my life was Johnny Hyde. He remained someone for whom I could do almost nothing. He needed something I didn't have, love. And love is something you can't invent, no matter how much you want it. He'd say to me, what kind of man do you think you'll fall in love with one day? And I answered that I didn't know. I begged him not to think about tomorrow, but to enjoy the life we had together. Marilyn Monroe, my story. Rumors of Marilyn and Hyde's affair spread quickly. The couple made no secret of their relationship. Johnny was comforted by the thought that Marilyn, an attractive young woman, society considered his fiancée. He appeared with Marilyn at social receptions and studio events proudly presenting her everywhere as a young talent waiting for worthy offers. Hyde planned her artistic career for years to come. He brought her to the attention of all those who held important strategic positions in Hollywood. But she figured marriage to Hyde would surely ruin her reputation once and for all. It would be ridiculous if I suddenly began to pass myself off as Mrs. Hyde, stated Marilyn. I would be taken even less seriously than I am now. Joseph Schenck, one of the most powerful producers in Hollywood once approached Marilyn. You know, perhaps you should marry Hyde. He's a very powerful and wealthy man. You have nothing to lose by doing so. Monroe respected his opinion, but on this occasion disagreed with him and replied, I'm not going to marry someone I'm not in love with. Marilyn, who would you rather have? A poor guy you love with all your heart or a rich man who loves you wholeheartedly? Marilyn thought for a moment. I think I'd prefer the poor boy. Shank grinned. I thought you were more prudent than that. I'm disappointed in you, Marilyn. There was something about Marilyn and Hyde's relationship that made her think about the transience of life. One day, she witnessed a heart attack of an elderly lover. Going up the second floor stairs of his mansion, Johnny turned pale, clutched his heart, and leaned against the wall. What's the matter with you? It's all right. It's not something to be trifled with.
see a doctor. Marilyn insisted on seeing a doctor, so Pi went to see a cardiologist. He came back in a grim mood. Things are bad. I may not have much time left. And that's why I'm asking you to marry me again. You'll have my name and my money. She, who was penniless, shook her head negatively and refused. It was one of the strangest decisions of her life. Maybe because the yellow press and almost all of Hollywood considered Monroe not only low materialist, who twists romance and relationships for the sake of career, but also even going to marry a man who is, as everyone knows, terminally ill. Realizing that his days were numbered, High was going to tell his lawyers that he wanted to leave one-third of his estate to Marilyn and two-thirds to bequeath to his children for their education. But this will was not finalized. Johnny managed to do for his beloved almost impossible, to conclude a seven-year contract on Monroe with 20th Century Fox. But just a few days after signing the deal, a 55-year-old Hyde had a massive heart attack. You could say that Johnny paid with his life for Marilyn, a difficult divorce, division of property, children who stopped communicating with him, worries about new roles Marilyn. On December 18, 1950, at Los Angeles Lebanon Cedars Hospital, a dying Johnny Hyde turned to Secretary Don Holloway. Please, if I'm gone, make sure Marilyn is treated as a family member. Holloway nodded, but she had no power to carry out his will. After Johnny's death, the family had kicked Marilyn out of the house where she had lived with Hyde and taken all the jewelry and gifts he had bought her during their year and a half together. Marilyn was forbidden by the family to appear at the funeral ceremony, but nevertheless she showed up with her acting teacher Natashalitis. Blackened with grief, Marilyn rushed to the casket and screamed, Please wake up! Oh my god, Johnny Johnny! Marilyn herself reportedly wrote this about her loss. Today, my greatest friend was buried. Hyde's son, Jimmy, recalled the heartbreaking scene at Forest Lawn Cemetery in the Hollywood Hills. All I can remember is Marilyn Monroe screaming my father's name over and over again. It shocked everyone. Even when he offered me his fortune, I still turned it down. It was the hardest decision of my life. And then he died of a heart attack. I felt partly to blame, and I cried for days after the funeral. Marilyn recalled. The death of Johnny Monroe experienced very hard. Marilyn felt terrible and tried to poison herself. Saved her Natasha Lightes, who called the doctor. Lightes found a note written by Marilyn. I bequeath the car and fur cape, the same one that gave Johnny, to Natasha. It was all she had. There were millions of men in love with Monroe. Millions of women envied her with black envy. But no one understood the main thing. Beauty did not make her happy. Some of her chosen ones did not see behind her attractive outer shell of a person in need of protection, a girl who grew up in an orphanage and just wants to be loved. Other men, ready for Marilyn to do anything, on the contrary, she was no longer interested, said Vitaly Wolf about Marilyn Monroe. 